we at Inside Arabia have the tremendous honor of speaking with our guest, Dr. Talal Abu Ghazali, Jordan's godfather of accounting and also an internationally recognized thought leader in intellectual property, education, and economics. Dr. Talal Abu Ghazali is also the founder of Talal Abu Ghazali Global, based in Jordan. Dr. Talal Abu Ghazali, thank you for joining us today. How are you? My pleasure. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be with you. Wonderful. How are things in Jordan? It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful, neat, nice, friendly city, Amman, and so is all of Jordan. Wonderful. And the weather is beautiful. We are in spring now. We, we were, this government, the government of Jordan, under the guidance and leadership of His Majesty the King, was, I think, out, most outstanding in, in, uh, in uh, facing and challenging and winning the battle with uh, Corona in Jordan. We have, uh, we have almost contained, if not completely, there has been no fatalities for the last month, and the total fatalities is only nine persons. Wow, that's really good news to hear. I think it's the best performance among uh, m many countries that I've been following. So that actually brings us to our first question. From your perspective, what has been the economic and political impact of the coronavirus on the Middle East? Uh, th that's why I, I started by saying that, that I, I, ra I raised my hat, which I don't have, but I raise it anyway. I raise it to the government here and the leadership of the king on addressing the corona. However, since the start of the uh, epidemic, I called for a joint, a, a, a parallel approach for facing its economic impact. I think the government chose to first deal with the uh, uh, pandemic that have this is one one epi one um, virus that has 20 names whatever let's say this virus so this this uh, the, the government established a, a a special team like an a, 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 a war a leadership it's a, it's a very, very, very authorized or completely authorized to even use all, 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 all procedures, including, including uh, using the military, using the uh, security forces to implement the decisions of curfew, decisions of wearing the, the mask, etc. And it worked extremely well with great sympathy and great affection. But I want that as much as saving lives is important, saving the economy as well is very important. And it should be uh, uh, addressed in parallel. And I was attacked for that because they said uh, that I, I give uh, equal pressure to, to money making or to, to profitability as much as to lives, which was, of course, misunderstood. Now, everybody realizes that we should have started uh, the, the, the battle on the two fronts simultaneously, the economic front and the um, <laughs> life saving lives front. Therefore, now we are in the government is now trying to see what can be done to address the consequences, the economic impact uh, of this uh, virus. And uh, this applies to uh, every country in the world. We all know that uh, the whole world was going into a recession before Corona. Mm. Every country in the world, in spite of all the optimistic forecasts of the World Bank, uh, and other institutions, European Union, etc. I predicted that we are going to go into a serious depression in 2020, as early as 2017. 
and I wow. made a public statement which everybody knows and at that time people were dubious were suspicious well this they thought I was dreaming uh, now we are we are in it now in every country in the world so I want to mention that it is would not be wise and not correct to blame all the economic problems of all the countries on this virus there was already a process that of erosion and of weakening and of recession uh, in, and uh, in, in all countries in different ways so now we are left with this problem to deal with in every country in the world i was speaking on this issue incidentally last night for one hour on jordan television uh, explaining what i what i could recommend in measures in order to to minimize the impact of the economic impact of this uh, virus so with that inevitable economic downfall uh, what are some solutions that countries can implement to find a way out, Arab countries in particular, and the world at large? If, uh, if, you want to, if we want to give credibility to, to the um, IMF, uh, the IMF said, or I'm quoting, that the uh, exit out of this depression in each country will depend on the measures that are taken or will be taken. Now, very few countries in this part of the world started early enough in imposing economic measures like in belt tightening, uh, uh, restructuring, uh, and various uh, and also action or, or decisions to, to, to support the, the economies uh, by uh, uh, providing uh, either uh, incentives or um, uh, having uh, liqu additional liquidity, what we call, what we call uh, funding yep. and liquidity in the, in the country. Some measures have been taken at different uh, levels and at different uh, times by the various countries. So no one can talk about all the countries as uh, at, at the same time as if it's a, it's a, a common uh, model of operation. But now, now every country in this part of the world realizes that we are in a depression and realize that uh, we need to take action. Some of the countries, more than others, will have, uh, it will feel this impact. Sometimes being unlucky makes you lucky. Countries which are not very much dependent on the foreign support, like the US or foreign business relationship or government financial and economic relationship, the damage will be less. If, if these, uh, and those countries are, are very dependent, are, are feeling uh, the pain more because the US already has uh, its own very serious problem. And you know that uh, already uh, the, the, the one trillion deficit in, in the US government budget is now four trillion. And it will be more than that because three trillion were earmarked for supporting the economy and now there is a call for two trillion for supporting the states yeah. so the, yeah. the the dependence on the us is is uh, is not uh, reasonable and is not should not be expected and so there is talk about what we can do in each country and i'm trying to give my own uh, recommendations in this regard. Could you give a solution that you see for Arab countries in particular? First of all, I, I, I think this is, there is something good in, in everything that is bad. There is something good in Corona because it, I have been since 2001 
calling for a revolution in our uh, schools, universities, economy, and government towards uh, digitalization. Okay. Now, Corona forced organizations like we already were, and that's why we were we are well, we are some of the best survivors because the impact on us is, is is very minimal because we are a digital organization and we and this uh, disruption of uh, routine office work uh, did not affect us. So the Corona taught the community and government that online is available and can be an alternative. And it, it proved to be very, very uh, useful. So one thing I'm recommending is to build on this momentum and become digital societies, digital companies, digital government, digital school, Inc., everything to go online. And uh, that would be uh, uh, the first recommendation in general. And secondly, I, uh, as a general, I, I submitted 16 uh, points uh, as consideration for a, 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 a process of uh, facing this pandemic. And uh, the second uh, one is about be trying to become self-sufficient under the circumstances because the resources, particularly foreign currency, is very difficult to to accede to to, uh, to have access to in this part of the world so uh, the idea is to become independent in many things that can be but because of the luxury and easy approach we didn't have to focus on two particular major sectors in addition to education of course which to me is number one and that is the uh, food industry or agro agro industry and the um, chemical or pharmaceutical industry. Okay. If the country can be at least self-sufficient and encourage and promote production of the basics, we don't need to, to uh, have a, a capability to produce all the medical uh, or the medicine required, but at least there are simple things like painkillers, like uh, simple... Uh, uh, iodine, uh, whatever, simple, and the basic needs to make them produced and available nationally. Similarly with food, we would be doing our countries a great favor. And at the same time, in improving our trade balance and trade payment um, uh, balance in, uh, in, in, in the long run. Uh, we also have to realize that uh, the the sectors that need to be developed now have to be different from what we were doing in the past so we have been in the past uh, focusing on real world businesses now we have to realize that we should move to ict enabled production so that uh, we can be able to compete with international uh, products to that point, you once repeated the famous phrase, when the U.S. sneezes, the world catches a cold. Absolutely. So what is the role of the United States in this international economic recovery? Do you see globalization as playing a role? What are your thoughts on that? I, I, I think uh, it's now obvious that nobody should, in his right mind, expect much in that direction from the U.S. at this time. The U.S. has its own problems to deal with, especially those which started nine, nine days ago in, uh, in the, 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 in, internally. And, and uh, in plus, I just said, the very serious deficit in the budget and the very serious unemployment situation. I mean, I cannot expect you to give me money for employing my unemployed and leave my own unemployed. Employed. Uh, you, uh, 
Uh, in the past, the U.S. could be much more supportive and generous, uh, but at this time, uh, uh, everybody had the same problem. And this is another thing that I always focused on for the last uh, few years, is that uh, because of the fact that there is no accredited or accepted world order today, all the world institutions are being challenged and violated. And because there is no agreed leadership of the world today, because of the, the fight between the superpowers, uh, there, was not, there is no possibility of having a coherent support uh, program for the rest of the world. So I, I personally think, and I always advise, we should now try to be more self-dependent and not expect uh, aid, much aid or much support as in the past from the US, except for the very special baby called Israel. That's another story. <laughs> <laughs> well, to touch on another point that you mentioned, uh, has the coronavirus accentuated or heightened uh, unemployment in Arab countries? And what are some solutions that these countries can implement to address the issue? We cannot blame all on corona. The unemployment issue was there and was brewing day by day and not only because of corona. Now, corona added... Uh, added fuel to the, to the fire, but the fire was already there. Now, we have to look at an employment as a, an impact issue, as a, an economic situation, and stop thinking of it, because it doesn't help if we think of it as a, a factor or a result of corona. Uh, then, okay, corona is over. Why do we have, why do we still have unemployment? The, un the unemployment is a problem of the ec economic malice, it's particularly in the Western ec economic policies. Because when you have and give so much luxury to the people and uh, that not and encourage them that their comfort is my only concern, and I'm, this is one of my, the battles I fight all the time, that people have to realize that in order for them to have luxury, they must work for it, and not just expect to be, receive money. For example, I take issue with any government, and I said this on Jordan TV and many, and at least dozen TVs during the past few, few weeks, that I'm against paying any money to the unemployed. I'm not against paying them, but I'm against giving them the cash and telling them stay at home and don't work. I, my theory is I would pay them only the, if they join workplace, the workplace in the ailing economy, in the companies that have in problems in, in, uh, in, in, in employing because they don't have the funding. And the government gives the money to the company and the company pays it to the employee. It is wrong, it is wrong to build a culture of if, of if you don't work and you sign as an un unemployed, you can enjoy sleeping at home and getting the money without being productive. I would like them to be paid but I'd like them to be paid when they join. And this way you solve two problems. You solve the problem of unemployment and you solve the, the problem of helping companies that are having uh, problems in, in, in continuing their operations because of the economic uh, situation. So that, that is something you now you can, you can imagine that the, the three trillion Allotted for, allotted for supporting the economy, the major part of which will go to unemployment, will not be enough because everybody now will opt and say, I'm unemployed. That's, that's better if I receive money and, I'm, I'm, and I'm, I don't have to work. So the culture, uh, I, 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 again, in criticism of this, of this uh, 
world civilization, which the West review as leads, of trying to be a welfare more than necessary and to be a, 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 a enjoyment and pleasure society instead of being a working and operating uh, community. So the, the, this change of culture, I mentioned this because we need this also change of culture that you want, you are unemployed, I will establish a database and I tell all the companies who, who fired the employees because they do, could not afford paying them and do the matching and pay them on the job to create a culture of where individuals must be productive. This is how it started, by the way, the, mark, the, the, cap, uh, the cap, American capitalist system. Now we are deviating from it. It becomes now a, a beneficiary system and not a, a capitalist system. The governments will pay you anyway. This, in my view, is against the, the, the principles of capitalism. You only get money if you produce. I'd like to go deeper into the impact of the coronavirus, uh, particularly on GCC member states. Do you feel like the impact from the virus is deepening the divide? What are your thoughts on that? The GCC is, is only an association. It's called Al Jami Al Arabiya. It's only an association, an, an umbrella for cooperation. But what we call European Union, once the corona started, every country closed its borders and said, I don't care about what happens to my neighbor. I'm first, as, uh, as the US president also announced, America first. So every country like the US, again, that's how when the impact of the sneeze and the uh, catching pneumonia, when America sneezes that America first, the whole world takes it literally and doesn't, not in the sense that my interest is first. It's in the, interest, in, the, in the sense that I am alone in this world and I don't care about anybody else. So when they close their borders, and now it, everybody knows and it's announced by the many European leaders that we need to revisit the European Union, because it is, it, this, this corona proved that there is no union and that the, the poorer was left to get poorer and the richer or the more powerful became more powerful. And in my view, in my view, the, the European Union faces a challenge of two options, either to restructure itself to become a real union okay. or that it will not survive uh, and will not exist in, in, in the near future. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking at a 10 years uh, line. And I think in 10 years, uh, the, if the, the union does not restructure itself, uh, it will disappear, to disintegrate. Now, the, in, the, in the Gulf, there is no such a situation because every country had its borders closed before that. There was, there was no open borders. It was only agreements on customs, agreements on travel. It was not one area, one community. And, uh, the, and the, they were very independent, so the damage was much less. I see. Well, talking about the relationships between countries right now, I'd like to go back to the United States. What do you think of the current relationship between the United States and China? Can it be improved at all? Uh, do you think that depending on who wins the U.S. presidential election in November, things will change between the countries? What are your thoughts on that? I, I'm, I'm, I would be surprised if you didn't hear already my views on this. Because I have uh, for some time been uh, warning that um, we are at the final stage of a real war between China and the U.S. We are now in the Cold War, as it has been announced officially. 
we've been, we've been through very different stages from sanctions to boycotting to uh, a lot of uh, counter actions and counter actions. And now the two sides have announced uh, that uh, the US and China that we are now uh, in, in, in starting a Cold War. And the Cold War means that the two countries will co have complete boycotts, that uh, they will have no trade relations, there will be boycotting of all the counter products, so the US will not accept and allow the, the sale of any products or services in in the US and similarly the Chinese. Plus the, the, the real threat which has now become very visible on the currency issue. Um, you are aware that two weeks ago the Chinese government decided that they have nothing to do with the dollar and they, they, they um, sanctioned uh, that uh, the stock exchange, the Chinese stock exchange, should not peg the, the Chinese currency they want to the dollar, even pegging it. And uh, that only the word yuan is to be used in China. There is no, uh, no wish to have any. And, and of course, you know that China is the only country in the world which uh, did not uh, tie its, uh, its, its currency to the dollar, neither as a reserve nor as a, a, a currency for valuation. So, and that's something that is very serious now if we say that the Chinese, and there is a lot of information in the research centers and different uh, media, that the Chinese are, very, are preparing to issue a Chinese international e-currency, digital currency. If that happens, that is a very serious issue with the American um, policy makers who believe, of course, that uh, the dollar is one of their most important assets in, in, in the American power economically, financially, fiscally, and of course, um, politically. So there are, uh, again, a number of basic problems between the two superpowers, China, the US, focused on one objective only. Who will be the next global leader? I understand, of course, and if I was the U.S., I would ne never allow willfully to hand over the global leadership to China. And China is not willing to reduce its growing economic and also technological progress about which uh, the American Secretary of Defense said that the growth of the America of the Chinese economy and technology is a threat to the national security of America. He did not say it, it's a threat to our economy, to the national security. So it's a threat to the, to the national security of the country. Um, and understandable, that is understandable. So what I'm saying is the, the two countries have to sit down and agree on a new world order and on a joint leadership of the world. That's I, how I see it, the inevitable, instead of continuing to fight each other until they destroy each other, they can agree to share the leadership of the world because this is also normal in the transition of power in history. History never stayed, no country ever stayed in, in, in power for forever. We have seen so many 
uh, changes over the, the years. So unfortunately, the two countries are not willing to sit together amicably. So something has to happen. And some act can be, uh, trick can trigger a, 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 a military confrontation, if you don't want to call it war. In order that we force each other to sit down. And uh, that's how I see the future culmination of uh, this Cold War into something that becomes unacceptable, like, for example, floating in a, a global currency, which um, we know will have uh, many partners once it's uh, offered, not just uh, uh, China itself, which is a huge market uh, for uh, on its own, just like they have their own national currency, which is not uh, tied nor pegged nor anything to the dollar. So um, something like that or something like blocking the South China Sea. And uh, I was concerned, I mean, worried that this could happen. And as you, I'm sure, following the news, uh, only last week, uh, President Trump announced that the G7 is now out of date and we need a new G7. And he added four countries which are in the vicinity of, the, of China and in the South, Xi, South, uh, sea, South China Sea, notably, notably South Korea. He, he wants to have North Korea, South Korea uh, become a, G, a G7 and uh, similarly three other countries from that uh, region. So it's, it's like of what he is saying, here is my team. You have your team, which is China, Iran, etc. Venezuela, I also have my team because none of the European countries is visibly saying I am on the American side. They're, they're trying to, to balance their existence. So he needed to show that uh, the US is not alone. He, he, he wanted Australia, he wanted uh, Philippines, and, and, it, and of course, uh, Canada is there. So he, he was showing that uh, um, it's like, it looks to me like the two teams, the football teams, are now being set up for the game, for the match. And uh, uh, it, it, anything can trigger uh, the start of the match. It's very easy. There are so many ways uh, that this can happen. Um, China is very, there is a lot of difference between China and its neighbors on the borders. Hong Kong is a major concern for China and could, uh, if things develop, can trigger this uh, problem. We have the oil issue and the embargo on uh, uh, Iran and uh, uh, in, in exporting uh, or supplying China with oil. If we block uh, the access of oil to China, that would be very serious. So uh, unfortunately, but also fortunately, because we cannot go on in like this forever. The world cannot pick it. It's too much. It's very expensive for every country and every person. So if a confrontation takes place, it's obvious that because this is how all wars end, by sitting at the table, having an agenda, have, making agreements, and uh, starting a new phase. And I think after that happens, we will have a, a new renaissance in the world. And I'm looking at that within the next four years. Uh, for four years uh, will be a reasonable timeline. So because agreements are not to be negotiated in one day, if you want to negotiate the world order, one thing is the World Trade Organization, which Trump says is... Uh, is, is, is unfair and should be changed. Intellectual property laws, which were drafted by the US, but now they are not 
agreed agree to nowadays. Okay, it was a negotiation in which the U.S. was a major player, but now they not they don't apply anymore in the digital age. So that is a very and he announced many times that China uh, stole us America by trillions of dollars of intellectual property rights. So there are many issues to be agreed on. World Health Organization is one of them and whether China is responsible or not. And whether it is responsible or not, are we going to make a claim officially and if it is not recognized, uh, go to war. The investments that China has in the US, whether in the money market, like uh, treasury bills and bonds, or in investments in general, which are estimated at three trillion, if the U, uh, the US, U.S. decides to nationalize them or confiscate them, that could trigger a confrontation. So there are many major issues which all revolve around one thing: who is going to be the next boss? Dr. Talal Abu Ghazali, thank you so much for joining us at Inside Arabia. Uh, before we close out, do you have any final thoughts to yes, share? Yes, I just wanted to say that these are not dreams, nor visions, nor creations of mine. These are, what I've said, is a result of study of American strategic centers and research centers announcements. I am a student. I don't, I don't invent anything. I don't create I'm not a creator, I'm a student. And uh, having uh, studied uh, the many, many re uh, uh, products of uh, think tanks and, uh, and, um, and, and famous, uh, famous economists uh, and, uh, and the think tanks of America and the research centers and announcements in, in the US, partially in, in Britain and partially in China. But um, my conclusions are a compilation of what I, I read and nothing that I, 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 claim, I claim ownership of. Thank you so much for joining us at Inside Arabia. We really value your time and your insight and your perspective. I, I love Washington. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's uh, for me the most beautiful, the lady of the U.S., the most beautiful state, I mean D.C., Washington, D.C., yes. uh, is the most beautiful state in the, in the country. But I love all the country. I have studied um, in American universities. My children and grandchildren graduated from American universities. I am a student of the American culture, our organization, and the only thing we do is based on the American dream, which we believe in, and we are great admirers of the achievements of the American people and the American uh, government. And uh, that's why also we follow, as I say, because whatever whatever happens in the U.S. impacts the whole world. So we we are very very lucky to have to have had this exposure to the U.S. and this uh, being able to learn uh, from the American experience in everything we do. And one of the things is we, we were a very early believers in the digital revolution and I had the honor of talking about this in different occasions on digitalization leaders of the world like Bill Gates. So I've learned a lot from my uh, my ex exposure to the American uh, culture. So I, I wish America good uh, future and I hope that uh, very soon America, the United States of America will be the as, as safe, as beautiful and as uh, friendly where, where the liberty statue says, welcome all, all people of the world. This is the country of the world. So best wishes to America. Thank you so much. I think that's a wonderful note to end on. Again, we are so honored to speak with you at Inside Arabia. And if you're ever in Washington, D.C., we hope that you stop by and visit us. 
Thank you very much. I am honored to be interviewed by you.